Namaste. Let's begin today in child's pose. Big toes together, knees as wide as you like. Sink your hips into your heels and your forehead toward your mat. Take elevation under the head if that makes you more comfortable. Breathe in full and deep, feeling the expansion of your belly to your thighs. And then breathe out, softening the back and the hips toward the earth. The mind is quiet and the breath is soothing to the nervous system. Letting go of any stimuli from the outer world or from your thought processes and simply being present in your body, on your mat, in this moment. Breathe in and expand. Breathe out and maintain that feeling of expansion, but soften into the spaces you've created. Inhale and transition up onto the knees and hands. And lower your elbows under your shoulders. The palms will come to the face. The rest the lower orbital though, beneath the eye into the wrist and you'll bring the fingertips up around the hairline the thumbs toward the ears the temples here you'll breathe again inhale expansive and on the exhale you'll let the weight of the belly and the head sink down toward the earth so that the neck is not holding the head at all, but instead the head feels secure to rest in your hands. Again, this is very soothing to the nervous system. Let the back of your neck and heart soften as you exhale. Let your belly soften and be vulnerable as you exhale. Enjoy the quiet of this position. As you inhale, you might think of lengthening your triceps down into your elbows for greater stability, and then the head may rest more deeply. Breathing in, breathing out, moments of quiet, restorative, and rejuvenating. transition to a sinus hold. We'll bring the thumbs into the inner upper hollow of the orbital bone. So thinking of the inside edge, the inner corner of the eye. Kind of pressing up and in with the thumbs till we find a hollow point that's just a, a little underneath the bone. And again, at this point, we want to release the head heavy into the stability and the structure that the arms and hands and thumbs are creating. This point will activate the sinuses to clear. And once again, as you exhale, let the head and the belly and the back of the neck soften and be heavy and release towards your mat. As you inhale, you may think about strengthening the support of the triceps, the arms, pressing into the elbows. As you exhale, you can add a release of the tongue away from the teeth, away from the throat, softening and opening up that area. Step back away from the mental clutter, the stream of consciousness, if you will. We've stepped out of it. We will become the observer, observing ourselves as we breathe into our body in each moment. So we'll transition back to child's pose for a breath. Let the palms return to the earth. Take the hips back over the heels. 
rest the head toward the mat. Again, you can take some elevation, a block or a bolster here if you're not resting comfortably. Breathe in, breathe out. softening and then we're transitioning once again coming up onto all fours this time hands into the mat under the shoulder toes will curl so there'll be a nice arch in your foot and on the exhalation let the spine release toward the front body belly heavy toward your mat feel the back of your heart and the back of your neck soften looking out slightly in front of you reaching through the crown of the head in front of you, looking down slightly, just letting the back of the neck be long, letting the belly be vulnerable. Inhale and exhale here. Let the spine soften toward the front body. Check the weight over the hands, across the knuckles and the wrist. Make sure it's even and smooth. And then on an inhalation, we're going to transition to cat pose. So we'll release the tops of the feet to the earth. And we will press really strongly into the whole hand as we draw the belly button up and in toward the spine. You'll feel your chin move toward your sternum and your tailbone elongate down toward your mat as your spine moves to the back body, broadens and rounds the back body toward the ceiling. Coming into this cat pose, feel the strength of your core, your center, connect to it. Inhale and exhale here. And let your exhalation be a softening and a release of the spine back toward neutral into our tabletop. We'll curl the toes again, stabilizing the hips, keeping them drawing back. We'll extend the arms forward and let the heart melt to the mat. So toes stay curled, keep that arch in your foot, keep the sitting bones stacked back over the knees, and elongate the spine, reaching out in front of you, let the heart and the spine melt toward the mat. If the head will release and soften to the mat as well, great. If not, just stop wherever you're at that works. Take elevation and prop the head if needed. Breathe in, breathe out. Here we're softening and surrendering the heart. Letting go of the tension, the stress that we may have built around the heart as a protective layer. We're exhaling the tongue away from the teeth, softening the throat, and experiencing vulnerability. The legs and the feet stay strong and supportive. The belly is lifting and hollowing out a bit. And the arms are staying active. Pressing in to point your finger, thumb, so that we're connecting the upper outer shoulder through the whole arm into the hand. At this point, we'll transition forward, lifting the chest, and then bringing the hips and belly down, extending the legs behind us. Let's take a neutral breath here. So we'll stack the hands and release the head to rest on the hands. We're 
release the tops of the feet to the mat. And we'll pacify the nervous system here. Bring it back into balance. Again, think about letting the back of the neck soften. Letting that cervical spine and curvature really come into its natural optimal state as you exhale here. When the hands support the head, let the curve of the neck naturally. Inhale, belly will press to your mat. Hopefully, breath will move to your side ribs and expand them right to left. And then maybe into the low back, depending on how tight it is. Exhale will be long and smooth. We'll bring those into balance. And then we're going to transition to Sphinx Pose. So, I want to activate the legs and feet. Let the sacrum be heavy. And then we're going to bring those elbows under the shoulders and the forearms into the floor. Sphinx is about opening the chest, but in order to rise and open through the heart, we must maintain strong roots through the legs and the lower body. So the sacrum is heavy, the feet are pressing down, active, strong legs, the triceps are lengthening down into the elbows, the forearms are internally rotated, pressing into the pointer finger and the thumb. And each of those actions helps facilitate on the inhale, the spine elongating, opening up toward the front body, the sternum pressing forward. Now let's lift this higher, pressing really firmly from the outer arm into the pointer finger thumb. Ask the arm bones to straighten without moving the hands. Feel that the upper arms have to continue to work toward the back body, keeping the heads of the humeri hugged deeply into the armpits so the collarbones stay broad. And as you exhale, exhale down the back body, down the cervical spine, down the thoracic spine, into the weight of the sacrum like an anchor. Activate and press the feet to the floor. And then inhale comes up through the front spine opening and lifting, broadening the heart. Exhale down the back, weight into the sacrum like an anchor, active strong legs, grounded feet. Press into the hands, inhale, sternum presses forward, heads of the humeri hug back, upper arms work back. Everything's opening at the front body. Your chin's parallel to the mat. Your inhale expansive. Your exhale and putting energy into your roots. Feel that nice strong connection from the eye of the heart where the collarbones and the upper arms meet all the way down the inner seam of the arm into the pointer finger ball mount, the inner edge of that thumb. That's your last breath here, and then it's going to be a nice, slow exhale, releasing the chest to your mat, where we'll stack the hands, and again, return to that neutral breath position. Let the weight of the head sink and release into the hands. Let the lower body soften, relax. Inhale. Belly presses to your mat, breath fills the sides, the back. Exhale, the softness of the back of the neck, releasing towards your mat. The softness of the back body, releasing toward the earth. Bring inhales and exhales into balance. Bring the nervous system into balance. Power in this pause as we just breathe deeply into the moment. When you feel neutral, when you feel that you've brought the nervous system back into balance. Then we'll transition again. Bringing the palms under the shoulders. 
We'll press the hips back over the heels. And we'll transition into downward facing dog. Keep your hands rooted in place. Again, you want the weight even across the knuckles and the wrist. You want those arms active and strong. You're gonna take those sitting bones back over the heels, toes curled. When the head ends up in line with the upper arms, then scoop the pelvis up, come up onto your toes. Get those inner groins to deepen and move back and lift high. Stay strongly pressing out through the arms into the hands, rooted there. And then pedal the heels, bending one knee, pressing the opposite heel towards your mat. And explore how that might help you to bring your pelvis into a greater balance for your downward facing dog. And downward facing dog, we want the arms and legs to be doing equal work. We want the belly to hollow out, lift and support us pressing out into our arms. But all of this is for the elongation of the spine, the torso, the spine, our long, the head's relaxed, our breath flows evenly. In this downward facing dog, we'll explore the position of the spine to help us find neutral more easily. So we will, after we pedal the heels a few times, work the feet into position that's about equal to where the hands are on the mat. And then I'm going to over exaggerate into a cow-like expression of the spine. I'm going to press the spine toward the front body and the chest back toward the leg. And we're going to breathe into that for a moment. So we're going to feel the armpits really hollow out. Feel that the heart's vulnerable and open and soft. And then I'm going to go into a cat-like position. So I'm going to bring the chin to the sternum. I'm going to feel the belly, the belly button draw to the spine and hollow out. And then I'm going to take the head elongate the spine through the head in line with the arms and pull the sitting bones and extend back through the sitting bones at the same time so that I'm finding neutral spine and my greatest elongation for my spine was still feeling really supported at the core. So you might play with that breath cycle several times and it may take you a few downward facing dog cycles before you feel like you really optimize your energy there in your downward facing dog the upper arms are externally rotating keeping the chest open and the heads of the humerus grounded in the armpit the forearms are working conversely to internally rotate and ground at the pointer finger and thumb when you feel satisfied You've had several breaths at Downward Facing Dog. Then you'll release the knees. And once again, we'll settle back to where we started. Releasing the hips over the heels. And extending through the arms in front of us, resting the head to our mat or to a block or a blanket. And return to child's pose. Inhale and expand. Your breath opens you up to the moment. Expands the torso in every direction, three-dimensionally. And then as your breath moves out of your body, you soften and return to your roots. Namaste. Namaste.